objective of Bradford protein assay is to determine the globular protein concentration of a sample containing an unknown protein amount, or for short, the unknown. In this assay, a special dye called Kamasi Blue is used to detect the presence of protein because the dye has a special affinity in binding to the protein. Before you start, be sure to have an organized rack and bench space. Also have a plan as to how you will lay out your samples in your rack. One way to use a rack in keeping track of your progress is to move tubes to another row each time that you add a particular reagent. The standard protein samples are a set of solutions containing known increasing protein concentrations. The protein can be any globular protein, like bovine serum albumin, or BSA. In following the lab manual's table for the BSA standards, you will take the prescribed aliquots of the BSA stock solution and add it to deionized water. If the solution has a volume greater than half the capacity of the tube, don't forget to use parafilm to seal the top of the tube and mix by inversion. Once you have completed making the standard solutions, then you will make two repeat sets of serial dilutions of the unknown. These serial dilutions are used to survey which dilution of the unknown stock solution will provide reliable results because each assay has a limited concentration range for an optimal measurement. Once all the dilutions of the standards and unknown are made, you are ready to add Kamasi dye to uniform volume aliquots of the standards and unknown. First, you need an entirely new set of tubes labeled for each of the standards and unknowns. Be sure to also include two tubes for the undiluted unknown sample, in addition to your survey dilutions, and one tube for the reagent blank. The reagent blank will contain only an aliquot of water equal to the uniform aliquots used for the acid. Now you are ready to transfer the dye to each tube. Be sure the stock dye reagent appears reddish brown to ensure that the dye is qualitatively at the right acidic pH. So start by adding the Kamasi dye reagent to the aliquot of water. Then add dye to the aliquots of standards and in your unknowns in the order in which these will be measured at the spectrophotometer. Keeping the addition of the dye consistent with the order of measurement keeps the time of incubation in the dye qualitatively the same for all samples which is important for consistency in measuring each sample in the same manner. What is equilibrium? Equilibrium is when a system achieves a state in which there is no net change in the amount of each component in the system, even though the components are in a constant state of flux. With all samples incubated sufficiently in dye, you are almost ready to measure the absorbance. You must first, though, double check with your TA that your samples are made correctly. Look for two things. One, all samples have the same volume. And two, there is a corresponding gradient of color in both the standards and the dilutions. Now, pour the samples into the cuvettes. These cuvettes are called microcuvettes because their capacity is meant for volumes less than one milliliter, basically volumes in the microliter range. Then carefully bring the samples to the spectrophotometer. Check to see that the lamps are on. Open the correct program. Also note that the bottom half of this cuvette has indented sides, so make sure you place the cuvette in the correct orientation. You can also double check to make sure the orientation is correct by looking for the arrow on the top of the cuvette. After you have read the blank, the program will prompt you for the standards. Be sure to place the standards with the correct order. 
standard 1 from table 1 of your lab manual should go into slot 1 of the cuvette chamber. Slot 1 is the furthest most slot of the cuvette chamber. Once all six standards are correctly placed into the chamber, then go ahead and close the lid, wait three seconds for the outside light to fully move through the photo detector, and then click OK. You will then see absorbance readings of each sample and a plot appear to the right of the screen. The plot will only be used for qualitative purposes of determining whether your standards were made properly. Never use the plot on the screen for actual data analysis. You will then notice that the program initiates a curve fitting tool that establishes the trend of absorbance to the concentrations of the six standards specific to the ones you have prepared. R squared values are also provided to help you determine how well the data points fit to the hyperbolic trend. When you have determined that your standard curve appears acceptable, then place the first set of unknown samples in the spectrophotometer based on the order in which you added the dye. Be sure to remember the order and record this on your printed data sheet after you have completed the assay. The spectrophotometer program will also provide absorbencies and determine the corresponding concentrations based on the curve fit tool's results. The concentrations are listed in micrograms of protein to the right of the absorbencies and they are the micrograms per aliquot for each sample added to dye. The program will then ask you whether you'll be measuring another set using this high-tech computer keypad. Select one as you'll be measuring a second set. If you have data that falls in the optimal range, then print the data. If the data is totally unusable, then do not print it out. Once you have printed the data, clean up your station and do not forget to take out your samples from the spectrophotometer. Close the program and do not save any previous data. Now it's time to label the data printout. Be sure to write your name, section, title, and any other necessary annotations that identifies the values listed on the printout. You will also be required to have your lab teacher initial your data as this helps to ensure that your TA has witnessed your performance in lab. Because the dye solutions contain acid, you must dispose of the dye samples into the proper waste containers. Don't get too. Notice I'm opening and Back and label the... Check to make sure that you removed almost all of the dye reagent from the cuvette. All right. You may then dispose of the cuvettes into the trash, as these cuvettes have now become permanently stained and cannot be used again for future experiments. <laughs> Lastly, wash your tubes out well with soap and ample rinsing. Washing your tubes for reuse is extremely important, as any residual dye can adversely interfere with future assays.